All right, just to be super clear, none of the information from this video comes from any of the cap clinics, okay? This is just stuff that I've asked people about. And I'm trying to share this information, not so that you guys can follow, you know, the protocol or, you know, the information that I'm about to share, but just so that you guys can start doing your own research, possibly into this topic. Hi everyone, it's Michael here, and I have my notes right here, so I'm gonna keep looking this way. So before I begin, I must remind everyone that I'm not a doctor. None of the information in this video is medical advice. This is purely me sharing my understanding and some of the things that I've read. So I'm gonna make this video about a topic that I didn't cover in the main TSW guide videos. The topic is fungal infections or fungal overgrowth. If you have persistent TSW that doesn't go away, if it gets considerably worse in hot and humid weather, you should maybe check if you have fungal overgrowth. This is something that I've struggled with this entire time that I had TSW, but I didn't talk about it because I thought that maybe it was like just a individual case kind of thing for myself. But a few months ago, I talked to some other people who went to the Bangkok cap clinic and they seem to have quite a few people deal with this as well. And since then, I've also talked to some other people from other countries who also seem to have this weird persistent TSW. And some of them did some tests and realized that they also had fungal overgrowth. So like most TSW information, there isn't a lot of official or very well-researched data out there, but you can read about related cases in some studies that you can find online. For example, there's a condition called tinea incognito, where you initially have fungus growing on your skin, like a lot of people do. And the topical steroids you use can worsen the overgrowth and let it grow into deeper layers of the skin and it also makes it much harder to get rid of. It's also known as a steroid-modified fungal infection. And the issue is that it also changes the outward appearance of these fungal infections so that when you see a doctor, there's a good chance that they're going to miss it. They're going to misdiagnose it. That's also what happened to myself. It's what I dealt with for many years and none of the doctors would prescribe antifungals for me despite me trying to explain the understanding that I've gathered. It wasn't until a doctor gave me a swab test. So uh, it's, it's called, uh, I think it has a few names like a skin scrape, scrape test, swab test. And um, that confirmed the fungal overgrowth for myself and it's it's a mostly painless test where they just lightly scrape a small sample of your skin like very very small flakes and then they take it they put it I think they put it under a microscope in the lab and they look for a fungal overgrowth so any of you TSW sufferers who suspect that you also have fungal overgrowth the most important step is to request this test, which you can get from a lot of different uh, dermatologists as well as general practitioners. And now comes the hard part. A lot of these infections are actually superficial infections. This means that these types of fungus, they already normally exist on people's skin, but it only overgrows and causes issues when your skin function is compromised. And if you have TSW, your skin is constantly compromised. Or if you have other issues that cause a lot of oxidation or inflammation, you're gonna keep having a compromised skin barrier. And what tends to happen is that even if you take a course of antifungals or use topical antifungals, it'll keep coming back. For myself, it comes back very quickly. And that's what I've experienced over the years, even before I discovered what TSW was. 
So here are two main ways to manage this recurrent fungal overgrowth. First, you can use antifungal shampoo on your skin. So I, my spread, uh, I myself spread Nazarel shampoo all over my skin and let it sit for nine minutes each day before my shower. Some people use Selsun Blue instead, and then you can use it for less time and less often, depending on how bad it is for you. So for TSW people, this might be painful depending on you know, what current condition you're in. If you have open wounds, it can burn. And the second method is what I've heard the people at the Bangkok Cap Clinic have been doing. They take a course of oral antifungals, usually for a week, uh, the first week of each month. And um, I've heard that some of them have taken them for as long as six months and then it's gone forever. But I, I don't know how long they usually take it for. And during this time, it's really important that you don't scratch your skin. The idea is to kill the fungus, but the eggs, um, you, you, don't, you can't kill the eggs with antifungals. So what happens is if you can avoid scratching your skin, you can avoid pushing the eggs into the deeper layers of the skin. And then eventually as the skin um, goes through its healing cycles, it'll, it'll, um, it'll, push, it'll push these eggs out, out of your skin. Um, yeah. So the reason they avoid, wait, I talked about this. So I learned this protocol from someone called Mariette. Her Instagram is tsw.topical.steroid.withdrawal. And she went to the cap clinic in Bangkok and that's what they had her do. So she took it for six months and then she stopped completely and the fungal overgrowth issue was gone along with her TSW. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the oral antifungal meds. Uh, the main risk of taking these meds is liver damage. In a healthy person, it's probably not a big deal in the long run, but if you have any liver complications, it's something you need to be aware of. Once again, not medical advice. This is just my general understanding from a bunch of reading and my, my own experience. So there are quite a few types. The Bangkok Clinic usually suggests itraconazole, which is also known as Sporinox. Um, they suggest 100 milligrams twice per day for seven days, then 21 days of rest, and then you repeat the cycle um, one week per month, yes. And then there's terbinafine. It's 500 milligrams a day for seven days, and then 21 days of rest. So also first week, and then the, you take the rest of the month off. And then there's flucon, fluconazole, also known as deflucan. It's 500 milligrams one day per week. So on the first day of the week, you take it, and then six days of rest, and then next week you repeat again. And to be really clear about this, I'm not telling you guys to do this. This isn't some set protocol, okay? I'm saying that this is what some people did in um, the uh, Bangkok clinic. So I really can't say how safe it is. Uh, really, like some people who take these types of medication for like other fungal issues, they keep going back to the doctor for blood tests to monitor their liver enzymes. So these are known risks. You know, be very careful. And if you really want to try something like this, please consult a doctor for your own safety. I also don't really know how long someone is supposed to take this for. I only know that Marriott took it for six months total with, um, Sporinox, I, be, I believe. So, yeah. 
Mm, I think it, yeah, I think it depends on that person's own case. So I myself have another health condition, another health complication that seems to be triggering this fungal overgrowth as well. So I'm not currently on this protocol. I have taken oral antifungals you know, quite a few times uh, over the years, but right now I'm not on it. I'm, I think I might consider going like doing this after I improve or resolve the other issue that seems to be triggering a lot of my issues. But I just wanted to pass this information along. Remember, don't do any of these things. Don't even think about doing these things until you actually get your skin swabbed to confirm that you have this fungal overgrowth on top of your TSW. Get a proper lab test done and make sure it's an issue before you try to do anything about it. And just in case you guys are wondering, I don't suggest you guys use antifungal creams in general. I've tried them and they don't work well for this kind of persistent issue that keeps coming back and you already have TSW. So you don't really want these types of other the the uh, other ingredients like the moisturizing stuff inside these creams so if you really want to try something first you could try the antifungal shampoos that's actually quite effective as well and that's it for this video i wish you guys the best of luck later